Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. What was that? Me, you guys. Oh, I, all right, I so, get a moist mouth. All night long, all I dream about is like the mountains in my hair. So I'm ready to do some business. Welcome in episode 307 of the Real Life Podcast. I'm Tyler Yaramchuk, Bag Milk, Jay, Wanye, Chalmers, usual cast of characters back and reassembled. The podcast is brought to you by the HGA Group. Take your business to the next level. If you want to hear more about what the HGA Group can do for you, go watch the video they have up online with Jay, where he pushes a button in an elevator. All right. He nods it. I love it. All right. Just eating a salad right now, of course. Very on brand for me. Yeah. Take your time. Um, take your time. This is real yeah. life. Went and uh, shot a video there just to tell and sing the praises of HGA because they help us so much. So I am a sponsored athlete. So, yes, I pushed a button in the elevator. And damn, did I ever push that fucking button here, M. Chuck? Term athlete being thrown around rather loosely here. Athlete. Wow. Total athletics over <laughs> here. Sponsored athlete. Uh, That's why you're eating a salad. Keep it tight. That's right. Salad. We're, I'm uh, going to start out your M. Chuck if we're yep. going to have long pauses in conversation. I'll take the fucking baton. <laughs> Please do. That's usually why I have long pauses. Now I can just sit back and let you have at her. I don't think that the Sutton interview got the love it should have got in the streets. I agree, man. 100%. I think that Sutton, Andy Sutton, to be specific, specific, is a very interesting dude. And he's killing it at life. And I think people were like, oh, Andy Sutton, that isn't about today's power play challenges. I'm not listening. Or perhaps they listened and said, I don't care enough to comment. I can't believe that's the case. Well, I just don't know how you could listen to the guy's story. Again, if you missed it, he's going to school for engineering. Changed positions, had the best season of any collegiate defenseman that gets recruited by 14 NHL teams all in the yeah. span of like a couple. Like, what are we talking about, people? Go download, go listen. He got 16, crazy. 16 surgeries in 18 years but was such a beauty that always being injured didn't prevent him from re-signing time and time again. He's 38 years old. The Oilers want to sign him for his 39th year on earth. And he gets challenged by, was it Rennie to be super fit? Yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. Well, he basically he, wanted to say fuck you to Rennie when Rennie was like, you're only playing half the season. So he worked out to get super fit and then blew out his femur and like ended his own career. Pretty That's gnarly. crazy. If you listen well. to the Andy Sutton interview and you enjoyed it, tweet about it or post it on your yeah. Instagram story and yeah. say, this was sure. great. Share Tell it up for friends. us. Yeah. Tell your and I'm going to guess he's doing better in his business career than in his hockey career. And his hockey career went really well. Well, yeah. that was one of the interesting things. Tyler, tell me if you agree. Is, was listening to Wanye and Andy Sutton talk a little business. <laughs> yeah, you guys started throwing around terms that like I don't know the meanings of, but I was like, oh, this sounds legit. Like I feel like <laughs> I'm in a boardroom right now. They were talking shop. I liked it. Yeah, you're talking shop. Jay he goes, the- um, Easton has 50 reps. And Verdero, is that the name? Verbero. Of it? Verbero. Verbero has 350 reps. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, and then we made an online team store portal so that we allow teams to sell merchandise and order their jerseys through an online store mm-hmm. and their fans to order from the team. But then they own a factory in Pakistan and they do all the fulfillment through their own factory. Well, there's no middleman with their company. No. Tyler, we say that so they're fully vertical, vertically integrated. Vertically integrated. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's very interesting. And then they have a composite hockey stick that he said does really well, which I don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah. Well, get us to send us some. I'll uh, I'll, I'll, uh, break a few twigs out on these uh, mean ODRs. He said he'd come back. Like, I think he'd be a good guy to get onto the Hockey Fights podcast. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they they actually, that's probably a good idea to get him onto the uh, the John Scott pod. I should shoot a note over to uh, John. We should get John on again, actually. Yeah, we we need John back. Yeah, do that in the next couple of weeks here before uh, before the start of the season. Recirculation, boys. That's what we're talking about. Right? That's right. Moving it around. Yep. I don't know. What I was really scared. Means. I was going to call him Ken Sutton, and I was really <laughs> paranoid the entire interview because I was like, "Wasn't there a second Sutton defenseman?" And we looked him up prior to him coming on the show, and I was all vulnerable. And then after the show, I was like, "Well, I hope I didn't say Ken Sutton." And I was like, "These are real Oilers podcast problems." If you call Andy Sutton Ken Sutton. Both great guys. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ken Sutton would also be a great uh, a great guest on the podcast, but I'm not sure what Ken Sutton is up to right now. I doubt he has 350 reps repping his composite stick. He may. Mm-hmm. 
I did. Those it. 3D printed <laughs> helmets? Come on. But that's <laughs> the kind of show as like a listener of the podcast myself that I would like to see more of if I was doing an imaginary survey mm -hmm. is like, where are they now with former Oilers is very interesting. Cause there's a lot of people who are doing interesting stuff that don't necessarily get credit for it, but we hear about the guys that are having tough times. Right. You want to mm -hmm. hear a fun fact about a former Oiler? Cause I found out what he was up to this weekend. Of course. Yep. Glenn Anderson was competing in the 60 plus Canadian uh, pickleball championships in Red Deer this weekend. Oh, oh. it's pickleball. Oh, buddy. It's like, uh, what? it's real. It's, it's like, real size. It's real life size ping pong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. It's the best. So he lives in Alberta. Nope. The Canadians, he was here competing oh, in the Canadians, Canadians for 60 plus. <laughs> I Googled Glenn Anderson pickleball and his like pro pickleballer page came up on pickleball.global. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, disc golf How, and pickleball. That's the future for us uh, real life listeners. How many people can say that they have a hockey DB page and a pickleball global page? I bet huh? you'll be shocked. Pickleball is it's huge. Yeah. Taken over. I know there's it is. Yeah. You hear, you hear like you often hear about that place Gauzer ranch, right? In Idaho. Where uh, it's no. like, so a lot of, <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of like former NHLers got places there and stuff like Gretzky oh. there and whatnot, but near Coeur d'Alene. I don't, I don't know. It's in Idaho. I don't know. Oh, in Idaho. Yeah, yeah. Because he has a place that he tags Coeur d'Alene in his Instagram shit. So is that well, it? <laughs> maybe Gauzer is close to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so the golf's obviously a big thing, but like the biggest tournament of the year is the, it's like the Gauzer Ranch pickleball tournament. And that happened in, you said Red Deer? Yeah. Hmm. In Red Deer, the world champion, or not the world champion. I think the Canadian championships or something were in uh, 60 plus. I've never right played there. pickleball, but I, I like I've seen it, and I know I, I, oh. I man, I think it's the next real life thing we got to do. It, it, man, it. You know what? That would be fucking awesome if we did a doubles match against each other. Yeah, I would fun, just man. like to point out, I firmly believe I would wipe the floor with all of you guys in pickleball. My lankiness, I think, would just be such an advantage. Well, then oh. we would be going for uh, to defend our title. Then mm -hmm. Chalmers, are you up for the challenge? I love pickleball. I've only played it a couple times. I know you played this weekend. The last time we played was on like a gravel, well, not a gravel road, but like a really unpaved road out of the lake. Um, but I get the, I get the sport. I think we'd be all right at it. I know you're better than I am. That's for sure. But yeah, I'd love oh. to take these two on it. Yeah. What are we Fuck talking about? Is it, it's, is it a tennis court or is it smaller? Smaller. It's smaller. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I feel like I can move around. We need to do yep. a pickleball video before <laughs> the start of the season. And let uh, let me point out here that if you're listening to this episode of the Real Life Podcast, our disc golf video, the full eight minute video, the head to head matchup, it is up, should be up right now on our YouTube. It, by the time you're listening to this, it should be posted. So it is being with. uploaded as we speak, Tyler. We are at seventy six percent on the old internet machine. Damn right. So by the time this podcast is uploaded, you'll be able to go watch our pickleball video or our disc golf video that'll be posted. Pickleball at, to come. Yeah. So pickleball Chalmers come. are gonna Chalmers and I are gonna bring the chip on our shoulder that developed from the disc golf competition mm -hmm. to the pickleball court. And the fact that you just said such an absolute statement about how great you are at it. I've that's never played more, it, but I'm very good at racket that's sports. That's even more. So. As the, the only, floor is what as the only sponsored mm -hmm. athlete on this podcast, <laughs> I am ready to take you on. <laughs> Mop the floor is what he said, I believe. Yeah. Hey, but let, like, as, as Tyler's potential teammate in this endeavor, I am, I'm taking myself away from his equation. He is on his own on this because I have never played pickleball, though I am confident in my ability to move around a pickleball court that I just learned about as smaller that's, than test. Yep. Footwork is, is very key. Yeah. Yep. Just got me some new kicks too. So I'll be ready. I'll be oh, yeah. Court shoes, court shoes. Yeah. I don't understand like on the seriousness of sports where pickleball ranks. Is it like somewhere between bocce ball and horseshoes? <laughs> no, it's getting more it's serious, legit. man. It's getting <laughs> real serious. Like what's uh, its peer at the like, like Olympics? Bo bocce ball. I, I bet you pickleball will make the Olympics. Really? Like, I, I, like I bet you it could. Does squash? Is it like squash? summer curling? Squash isn't. You know what? It okay. So curling in the sense that it does attract an older uh, demographic, demographic. Yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, man, I don't know. I, I could I could see it. Ping pong. If, if ping pong's an Olympic sport, then pickleball yeah. definitely should be and an Olympic badminton. sport. Badminton. I mean, it's 
It's more well, they're giving her though in badminton. I, are they giving her that hard at the old pickleball championship? Well, that's what I want to say. That's what I wanted to ask because if you're comparing it to ping pong, I watched a bunch of Olympic ping pong and that was intense. Oh, isn't it crazy? It is like bananas. tennis. They, they, they take up, they take up the space of a tennis court, but yes. landing the ball on a ping pong Fuck. table. Yes. And the curve you, and the spin on those ball, like the way they're hitting it is amazing. It I is. wonder who gets like a compare. They would get a comparative workout tennis players and professional ping pong players. I swear it's similar exercise. There's a Netflix documentary out about like these youth, uh, like ping pong phenoms from the States. I think they were twins. And I got sucked into the vortex of watching it. And man, was I fucking in it on their quest to try to be the national champions. I love those. I watched Did they do one- it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th- I believe they won the nationals and it, 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 was, ah. it was them trying to pursue their global domination after that. But they I were love young, all of those obscure ones. Like I watched uh, about like alpha go playing against computers and I've watched chess documentaries. I love all that shit. So if there's a oh, ping pong one, I'm Mag- our boy, Magnus, Magnus. Yep. Love Magnus. Speaking of love Magnus. speaking of movie, there's a movie good enough looking that I'm worried. I might go to want to see it in the theater. It's a Venus and Serena movie with Will Smith. Really? Oh, that'd be good. Oh man. That'd Have you good. seen these trailers? You want to talk about ping pong and determination? Like, whew. that'd be really good. This movie looks unreal. Am I the only one who's seen the trailers? Anyone? I, no, I'm gonna watch it right after. What's this. it called? Mm-hmm. I don't know. King Richard. It's yeah. about Venus and Serena and their dad in Compton. Yeah, I think it's called King Richard. Whoa, sorry, I had the sound. So, are you much. saying that you don't you you have no desire to go to a movie theater, no matter how good a movie is? Uh, no, what I'm saying is guys- only only a massive blockbuster that I need to see on a 90 foot screen is going to get me into a vortex. What do you think that'll be like? Is we're talking well, this movie Serena. looks pretty good. Will Smith yeah. was crying in the preview, and I respect mm-hmm. an actor who can cry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if Venus and Serena overcame such huge odds to make a movie about their life, perhaps I could overcome no odds and go to a movie theater and watch. <laughs> I've been I've to two who... movies in the. I've been to two movies in the past two weeks. <clears throat> How was it? Love, like I missed it. Oh man, I love movie theaters. I love going to the movies. Best. I yes. love getting popcorn, M and M, and pop. And you I love just to. sitting there. And for two hours, just being in a dark room with a huge screen in front of me and my boys watching a movie. What'd yeah, you it was away? awesome. I, I went and saw Jungle Cruise with my one son oh, uh, when my yes. wife and my other son were out of town. And it was great. The Rock, I, I love The Rock. It was really, really good. It's not like cheesy rock. It's like, it's a good, good movie. It's not just like this Disney cheesy thing. But then yesterday, um, how was weekend, Emily Blunt? How was Emily Blunt? I've got such she's great. great. Yeah, she's, oh, I she's love fantastic. Her. All three of them. There's three that basically ride the boat the whole time, um, and they're yeah, it's it's really good. They're all really good in it. Uh, but she's extra good. She, you know, she's she's always good. I can't really think of any too, too many things she's been in, but I've always like Quiet Place. She was amazing in her Mary thing. Poppins. Oh yeah, I didn't see Mary Poppins. I also Minority had a crush on the original. No, uh, no, she was the, the adjustment. I, the adjustment bureau. The adjustment bureau. I saw the two good, I saw two movies and I couldn't decide which one I liked more. They were so both that good. When wow. he, on, on, on Friday night, I went and saw Free Guy with Brian Was it Reynolds. good? So good, man. Oh, really? really? Is that, it like, looks like I it'll can, suck. Yeah, because It does look like it's going to suck. Based on the, on the preview, I just can't see, uh, is it a rated R movie or no? No, it's PG. We took our boys and, and, oh, and okay. it is PG. There's, there was, there was basically one part where he references his virginity and that's like, the only part I kind of went, okay. And it was right at the beginning. So now I was like kind of on alert to see if it would be, if there would be more, um, you know, off side parts, but In then it wasn't do? even bad. Like, no, it was good. And, and so like Ryan Reynolds, I don't know if anybody's seen a preview because we, me and my wife the other day, we really like like mission impossible type movies. I wouldn't bring up movies. movie previews chalmers on this podcast. They go over surprisingly poorly. Like what? Like, Oh, no, like no one had saw my part. Venus and Serena movie. <laughs> I'm like, everybody? Yeah, nobody? Okay, nobody? No. I just nobody watched it. Again. It looked good. You just watched uh, it live on the podcast? Yeah, I had the sound played for like a second. I think oh, the people listening boy. will hear it. Anyway, the, the Brian Reynolds thing. If you guys have, like, we love movies like Mission Impossible, and he has a new uh, movie that's the, um, the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard with Salma Hayek and Samuel Jackson. The first that one's one great. Was was awesome so good dude the second one it's one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life it was constantly like ryan reynolds does this like kind of van wilder humor where he's always like 
talking like this and so animated about like trying to He's the exact same character in every movie. Well, I was going to say, I love Ryan Reynolds, but he's made a career of being just Ryan Reynolds in absolutely everything. Yes. I'm fine with that. I am too. Yeah. And so like in Deadpool, it works and stuff like that. It works like the the Hitman's bodyguard. It works. But in Hitman's wife's bodyguard, the sequel, it is just over the top. It's not funny at all. The movie is, it's almost like they were just like trying to center it around Salma Hayek's boobs and Ryan Reynolds being able to be funny. And it was an awful story. So I was going into free guy thinking like, if he's this over the top Ryan Reynolds, it's going to ruin the movie for me because I'm already like worried about it. And it wasn't, it was, it was awesome. And so I enjoyed both of those experiences this weekend in a movie theater. Glad to be back. Basically 10 other people in the whole theater with you. So if you like going to theaters and you like, and they do this thing too, where I hate when people sit next to me. It's, I just hate it. I hate when you get tickets in the theater and all of a sudden somebody sits next to you uh, that you're, that you're not with. And they, specifically now x off the seats on either side does that include people that you came to the theater with chalmers like the people that you're with you're like do not sit next to me motherfucker no because we got to share i gotta sit right next to my son so we can share the nibs the m&ms the popcorns the little hershey bites that we bought hold on two candies and a popcorn three candies and a popcorn man you're spending big bank when you go to the movies oh yeah that ain't cheap they're combos they're like a dollar trip oh yeah yeah, it, it's not cheap. Yeah, you I got the ninety-nine dollar combo, Chalmers. Yeah, the life deal. is good, good Shay Chalmers these days. I'll tell I you. I don't miss the I don't miss the prices of that place. I'll tell you, but we haven't been to a movie in a year, so I got my whole yearly movie budget just burning a hole in my pocket. So yeah, three candies. You want a fourth? Fuck, let's have it. Extra butter? Why not? Whoa! Oh, yeah. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> in this economy? Good lord! Yeah, I would like to make an observation as to how the recording this podcast is going. Uh, Wanye, since you're on your phone, um, every time you, you keep going away because you're closing the window, then coming back, and every time you've come back, your camera's been facing a different way. Like you've done a complete 360 around like your little zoom window. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, At the moment, the cradle that I charge my phone in, it only lets me have earplugs or earphones in if it's upside down. I liked when you told that to Andy Sutton. You're like, hey, I'm going to be upside down for the And then he like scared me. And I'm like, okay. And then I turned my phone around because I'm not going to tell Andy oh, Sutton I know fuck. better. Yeah, he was just I, like, no, you're not. And you're like, okay. I, yeah, I'm like, I oh, wish I had that then, on recording. Oh. When I keep going you know off can, screen. Oh, sorry. You can change it so that the screen actually will turn with you. Like, it's, it doesn't have to be upside down right now. You must have the screen lock. It's so I don't know. Funny. I keep getting phone calls. That's why I keep disappearing. Goddamn streets. Mr. Popular. No, not Mr. (laughs) Popular. In fact, no, 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 no. (laughs) When you post your number on Reddit and say you're Jordan Everly, you get some calls. That was a dumb idea. (laughs) Did you see, Chalmers, speaking of dumb idea, did you see the video of LeBron James playing football? No. That SportsCenter posted on Instagram? No, so he's got footage of himself working out with the Dallas Cowboys, like at some point back in time. And yeah. they're playing flag football. <laughs> he is unreal. Now, I'm sure no one's trying to catch him because he's LeBron and shit. But he claimed as though he was going to be able to play. He would have made the Cowboys. And he has a special contract. Jerry Jones wrote him framed in his home office. He could have been a tight end in the NFL. I'm pretty convinced of that. So then that was my question is like, given how insanely good he is at basketball, I assume he made the right decision or is it potentially he could have been that good at football? No, he made the right call. He he would not have had any length of career like he's had a basketball. I've heard this argument on other, on other places and the, every single time it's brought up, somebody inevitably has to bring up what I'm going to bring up. He's playing flag football in that. Yes, he can run. Yes, he can jump. Yes, he can catch. Have you ever seen tight ends go up the middle and get hit? Have you ever seen them have to block when they're not getting the ball? It's but isn't LeBron constant. just like a specimen? Like, wouldn't he just straight arm a guy and turn him into dust and keep it but going? Can his body stand up to that? Like, those guys, people and who play would... football their whole life are, are straight up, like, you know, on the accustomed joints. to getting hammered. And he, yeah. he can't just walk onto a football field, take a hit from another person who's as big as him without, like, being seasoned. For Is that. there you know players I mean? in the NBA as big as LeBron or no? In the NFL? NFL. Yeah, sorry, not, yeah, NBA. Oh, NFL? Yeah. There's bigger guys than LeBron James in the NFL? Well, yeah. how, how big's LeBron what? James? I don't know, 10, he's not, 7? He's not Yao Ming, yeah. 
Who is in the NFL that's as big as LeBron James? God, I hate that Google never puts it into fucking like six foot six or whatever. I, I'm on his tires. He's six foot nine. Wow. Six, oh, six nine. Pe- Ooh, no. Yeah, yeah. There's not. There's not too many people in NFL are six nine. That is Good just God. a gigantic human being. Yeah. I for K. Yeah, yeah. No, no. The thing oh, that's if, funny about basketball yeah. too is like, even the small guys are still huge. You know. So like you tall. A point guard. Not Muggsy Bogues. Six five or something. Muggsy like Bogues was six four. What? Muggsy Bogues was five four. <laughs> <laughs> what about Spud Webb? <laughs> I was like, he was. Oh my god. Spud Webb's pretty tall. Okay, but yeah, here's, yeah. here's 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 the thing about football players, and yes, it's it's something that you, if you did a, a, a deep Google search, you would find very big guys. But for instance, they talk about a nose tackle who was six five, three hundred and seventy five pounds, <laughs> three hundred and seventy five pounds. So five. Uh, uh, how's this, Chalmers? According to the old Google machine, uh, there's a player named. Uh, Jonathan Ogden, that is the exact same size as LeBron James. He's listed as the tallest NFL player right now. And what position does he play? Uh, he's, a, he's, defense, he's a defensive end. Bear with me. I believe. Offensive tackle. So the number number one biggest player in the NFL a couple of years ago was a guy named Bryant McKinney. He was 6'8 and 360. He was a starting left tackle, meaning every single play he um, – Left tackle. Is it left tackle? Offense or defense, your Chuck? That's a that's defense, right? Yeah. Offensive. Oh, no. This guy yeah. I'm talking no, about no. is an offensive. The left tackle, tackle offense. He's he's having to run backwards and stop defensive linemen from getting to his quarterback. That's Brian McKinney. And that I don't oh, know, so man. this is this guy doesn't play anymore. So I again I don't know anything about football, but this dude was in his prime, uh, Jonathan Ogden, that is. He was six foot nine, three fifty. Cool. That is a gigantic human being. How much does LeBron oh, weigh and how tall is he? Just for a frame of reference. I'm on it. Same height. Uh, let's see if we got an estimate on old LeBron James here's weight. Uh, 250. So this dude, this guy oh, man. apparently had 100 pounds on him. LeBron James, you know what? I think you made the right decision playing basketball. There you go. It says, mm-hmm. it says, it says mm-hmm. also the average size of a tight end in the National Football League right now the average height of 6'3 and an average weight um, of just over 240 pounds. So LeBron. So he's, he's, he's definitely taller than that. He's yeah. taller than the average. He weighs about that. Now, his size, that's one thing. It's, a, it's another thing to, like, to know if he can take a hit and repeatedly and hard ones. Like, well, that's why his Robert career wouldn't have been as long. Too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But I mean, even right, like even okay. Let's just say you took him at like twenty five and threw him in the NFL. I, everybody says he would just excel and just be like amazing. But if he hadn't been like taking hits for years before that, it's going to be a rude awakening, I think. For him. but I also <laughs> just think like I know the gear would weigh him down. But even think of like his ability. Come likely this just in my head, but like. His ability to like jump up, like maybe not as a tight end, maybe he'd be just like a massive wide receiver, but like imagine his ability to like jump higher than current tight ends, like those big guys. Like it'd be insane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He could be like a good deep, like athleticism. It'd be nuts. Yeah. You see, you see, you know, tight ends, they don't jump. And the reason they don't jump is because they're always going through the middle. And when they go through the middle, get their legs, the guys that have to cover them are so small. uh, In like by the time they're into the backfield, that these guys just try to hit them at their hips. And if those guys take a jump, they're going to do a flip in the, in the air. So it's not very often. I think that a lot of these guys try to get all that much air. They just try to reach for it, keep their feet on the ground. All I know is that there is just gigantic human beings playing these two sports. And it would be fucking terrifying to have one of them bear down on you. Imagine, imagine, (laughs) imagine being a punt returner in the NFL. No, I would never. (laughs) First of all, a ball is coming at you at terminal velocity from like 300 feet in the air that you have to catch. Yep. Meanwhile, these units of humans are running at you top speed that want to take your fucking head off. Mm Mm-hmm. Just gigantic people too. And then it's like, you also got to focus on the ball because if it hits you and it drops and it's somebody else's ball or you got to uh, fair catch it, I don't know. Well, this imagine- brings us back to our chat with uh, Sutton. We were talking to him about the injuries that he'd suffered and like how tough he was that he yeah. would get hit. He would block so many shots that over time his bones would just shatter. 
because he blocks so yeah. many shots in the same space as bad. Remember when he also Jesus. told us a story of a guy taking a clapper to the jaw? Like, that's bad news. Right oh, yeah. Him. Who was that again? Jack I Hillen. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was saying uh, it like it like shattered his jaw and knocked out all his teeth and all this crazy shit. Mm. Uh, speaking of being yeah. tough, we could all look real tough at the Oilers Nation Open if we got matching Twig and Berry sunglasses from twigandberries.ca. All black look. They're pretty sleek. They got a couple different styles as well a couple different frames different colors all that stuff get your own pair they're only 24.98 but with the promo code nation 15 they're going to be even cheaper load up your order get some nutsack underwear maybe a new hoodie before you know it your order's over 75 bucks you're getting free shipping twig and berries.ca promo code nation 15 my twig and berries hoodie came out last night because you know what it's it's actually kind of sad we're getting to that point of the yep. year where when the sun goes down she starts to cool off pretty quick what are you talking about it was 30 degrees the other day but like, oh no, it was super hot during the day and I'm sweating balls. But then as soon as the sun goes down, it's just like, oh yeah, it's going to get brisk here real soon. I like oh, that. Yeah. I like when it's like that. I do too. It's much better for sleeping. I'll tell you and that you can, much. And yeah. And you can have a fire too. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, fair enough. I'm still not ready for summer to be over. Me I'm, either. Uh, it's my hot girl summer. And I didn't get to do any of my hot girl stuff. Yeah. Me neither. I had so many plans, Tyler. There, uh, I know we've been doing a good job just talking about nonsense here, but there was actually one, uh, how one, dare you. there's how one, dare you? <laughs> you'll like it, you'll like you? it, you'll like it. Go on. So, today on the DFO rundown with Jason Greger and Frank Cervalli, we had Dave Tippett, Oilers head coach, stopped in I for saw a chat. That. Great guy. Um, I felt like a big dog because before we started recording, I said, Hi, ah, Dave, uh, your lighting's not good, man. Gonna need you to change up where you're sitting. Made him go sit Ooh. at a different point of his cabin. You just coach the coach. Yep. Does that make wow. you GM? probably yeah, um, not too many people can boss him around yeah um yeah actually that's he he was like is my lighting okay and i was like no it's not so i didn't actually like go out of nowhere he asked if it was okay so i probably you know embellished that did you bit. ask him to grow his mustache back yeah i did not is the real the mustache. i should have but it felt like a real like professional vibe interview i didn't know if i could be like hey dave grow your mustache haha <laughs> and he'd be like people who the fuck it. is this guy i feel like that could have been i should have been in rapid fire mm-hmm yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, Will you grow your mustache back? The people want it, sir. Yep, thank you. Anyways, he shared some stories. Did you guys know he is uh, quite the multi-sport athlete? Yes. So, mustache yeah. growing, hockey coaching, what else? So his golf game used to be pretty good, but he's had Soccer. hand surgeries and his fingers aren't good. But yeah, he used to be... He played with Canada's national team in soccer for like U16 really? and U18. When he was 12 and 13... He said there used to be this thing called like the Adidas skills camp and he won it like qualified for it and then won the Canadian title back to back years. He was like the most skilled soccer player in his age group back to back years. Hmm. Crazy. eh? Did he strike you as a good dude? I mean, you're not going to say no, obviously on a podcast. So say yes. But like, what were your impressions of him? I, I like, I didn't really know what to expect from the interview because it's like an off season interview with a coach. Usually they don't want to like give away too much or anything like that. I was stunned at how talkative he was. Like even before the episode started recording, we were talking for like 15 minutes and he was just going on. Oh, this is what I'm doing this summer. Oh, I was hanging out with Quenville the other day. Oh, I was at this golf tournament with so-and-so. Ah, blah, blah. And he just like went on telling us about his summer. Like he was legitimately like happy to be doing the interview and was like talkative. Like he was chatty. It was cool. It was interesting to see that kind of side of him. Whereas usually after games, you just hear like the grumpy tip it being like, oh, we were good tonight. I mean, there's things we got to work on though. Stuff Where does like, he yeah, like, summer? Yeah, he's in. Uh, wait, what'd you say? Where does he summer? Where does he? Summer? I don't remember. It's somewhere on a lake somewhere. I forget which state it's in. He's somewhere down oh. in the states. I think he spent a little bit of Probably time. Probably Gaza in Ranch. Over right. oh, the pickleball, pickleball championships. Boom! I bet you'd be a hell of a pickleball player. I think he Does still he goes back to Scottsdale of... too. Scottsdale. How much does he make? Lots, right? Like three million. Yeah, I think he's a pretty one of the more better paid coaches. I didn't ask him. He didn't Fire. ask him. He didn't ask him how much money he made, and he didn't mention his mustache. And you call that an interview? With hey, coach. Dave, just to <laughs> wrap up the interview here from a production standpoint, can you send me a pay stub? Thanks. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. I'd like. There's to know a question from of, uh, Twitter. Twitter uh, T9 Yar wants to know: Have you ever accidentally walked by the Oilers shower and seeing Connor's rope? Mm. Did you guys see Jujar Kara was trending the other day? For what reason? Why Some... did that come up just now, Tyler? Rope. Yeah, how did you connect the dots? Yeah, what, there? what was the connection there? So, some like random account, like some super popular like Twitter girl, just randomly tweeted out a photo of Jujar Kara, 
and was like, oh my God, this man is like Superman. He's so hot. And then like mm. a bunch of people who weren't hockey fans. Okay. It was her, her at handle thing was, uh, I can't find it. But anyway, she posted a photo of Kara and he like went viral because all these people who weren't hockey fans were like, oh my God, this is the hottest man alive, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I saw one person go into like the thread and they're like, I don't even need to know for sure, but I can tell you it's huge. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> no, no, no. Jujar Kara's good looks are growing the game of hockey in ways we could have never imagined. Word spreads quickly, I guess, huh? Uh. I saw one of the first ones like I just, and growing is trending on Twitter. I'm like, yeah. oh, what? Yep. I hope they respect the hammer in Chicago. That's all I know. <sighs> yeah. God bless you, Jujar. I hope for all the best. Um. So, anyways, yeah. This random picture of Kara got like six thousand likes and like two hundred and fifty quote tweets of a bunch of people who just kept being like, "Tell me this man's name. I need to know his name." There's a lot of women. Wow. Yeah, if you want a good time, go scroll through the quote tweets of like the original tweet. It's pretty funny. Jeez, maybe you'll get like GQ will pick him up and he'll be the cover of GQ or something. Or he's doing he's doing Calvin ads with Bieber. Yeah, just moved into a completely different stratosphere. Just like you remember that um, that criminal in Florida, the mugshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Handsome guy. Mr. Handsome guy became like a, all of a sudden became a model. Like maybe that's where Jujar's next step is. I can see it. Maybe. The world needs it. He'd be a great uh, nutsack underwear model. Oh, oh boy. They have to design a whole new line called the Cobra Command, <laughs> which is just steel rivets <laughs> and reinforced <laughs> groin. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish everyone could have seen how hard Bag Milk laughed at that. Like full body. <laughs> you were like doubling over. <laughs> uh, Cobra Command, new from Twig and Berries. You can't just strap that. J-Lo Anaconda the movie type <laughs> beast into standard apparel. No. No. Also, uh, one other Oilers thing. I don't know if you guys saw <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, well, you want to go again to the well. Let's see what you pull up in the barrel or bucket rather. Uh Leon Drysettle's back in Edmonton. He posted some pictures today of him at Rogers Place, a video of him inside Rogers Place. And today's also the anniversary, four-year anniversary, of when the Oilers signed him to an eight-year extension. I knew so. the city felt sexier today. We're yeah, four I, years I into Leon's eight-year extension. Yeah. Oh. Got to get going here, boys. Time flies, doesn't it, lads? Four-year window. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear the boys are starting to get back in town. I didn't know they showed up this early, but I like it. Get into the mix. Isn't Boosh back in town? He was on a boat with Ryan McLeod last week, wasn't he? Oh, and I know he's right. training with Daryl too. Like, so those two have been getting after it. And from what I've heard, actually, Gregor told me this a little while ago that Darnell Nurse is just a beast. So having Bouchard with him doing some offseason training, that's that can only be. Yeah, that's good. Hopefully, that that's. I, I really hope, and we actually really need Bouch to make a big step this year for us. Tippett called him out like by name on the pod. Like he went through all the offseason ads, and then he kind of stopped and went like you know, who's going to be really important for us, Evan Bouchard. And he talked about like the upside of this guy, how good he thinks he's going to be like multifaceted defenseman, not just a power play guy, like all this shit. Tippett's really, really high on Bouchard. I wrote about him on Saturday at OilersNation.com, And I, I, he's my wild card this year where it's like, sure. He may start on the third, uh, on the third pairing for D, but I could, mm. I could absolutely see a scenario by the end of the season where he's already moved himself up. Awesome. ELC. Let's go. Eat it. Jay still wants him traded. Yep. That's true. Well, didn't have the fire. I still don't know if he has the fire. I know <laughs> he has the tools. We'll find out this year. Cause he's so going to find out this year. Yeah. Get your feet wet. You might as well go swimming. Let's go. Yep. I'm starting to get excited, man. Kool-Aid season's coming back and it's well, going I was down texting smooth. with you on the weekend about the season launch party. Yeah. That's not that far away. We're no. doing one of those again, buddy. Yeah, we're doing it. October 22nd, Pint Downtown. Let's go. I missed the pint. Me too. I went a little while ago for a beer, and it was nice. It's just nice to be well, back for, looking for at the roof again. Us, anyone who's joining us for the Nation Golf Tournament next Thursday, the uh, the 19th hole, the the, 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 the the real first hole and the real last hole will be at the pint. Yes, Ooh. Oilers Nation Open next Thursday. Uh, Frank Cervalli is going to be in town, so I'm excited to have a pint beer or a million with, uh, now, with Frank Cervalli. can you play golf with you're with Gregor and Sarah Valley. Isn't that an option in this? That is, world? that is a fantastic tie-in. If you're listening to this podcast and you're like, damn, I missed out on a chance to buy into the Oilers nation open. Cause it is sold out. Now there is one more spot. 
and it will be auctioned off next Monday on the Jason Greger show. And you can bid for a chance to golf with Jason Greger and Frank Saravalli. You and a friend with Greger and Frank, it's the DFO rundown package. And it is your absolute last opportunity to get in on the Oilers nation open next Monday on the Greger show. He'll be holding an auction. Um, I might bid like I might bid win and then bail on our group just to go golf with them. Wow. Charles, dare more you. shots. He's, that's another shot. Your rim truck is firing across our bow. Chalmers. I don't know where this confidence comes from. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Know where We're taking from. notes. We're taking notes where we've got We've got our vision board in our room where it's just Tyler's face that we just want to run over mm-hmm. with a pickleball mm-hmm. truck. Yeah, sure. I would, I would never bail on our group and I would never miss the opportunity to golf with Fanny pack. Freddie who won our option. Auction, auction. I've One got the auction. stressful, daunting task to host and show Frank Saravalli uh, and ch- to try to show that we're actually like a real company. Next mm-hmm. <laughs> that, Good luck. Is, that is stressing me out. But what isn't well, like, I mean, first of all, you got to bring him to the basement at Little Brick. That'll be a big one. He'll really like that. Began. Yeah, I'll take I'll take him to I'll take him to the tire shop. Yeah. Take him to all the nation HQs and he'll be like, whoa, this is fucked. And then take him to the new office and he'll be like, oh yeah, you guys are legit now. Yeah. Okay. This makes sense. This is actually better. Yeah. yeah you should like say, all right, let's go check out the office, Frank Saravalli. And you just show up at the apartment Zach Lang is currently living in. Like while Zach's there, like yeah, and his girlfriend are like cooking dinner and you're like, yeah, anyways, Frank, we got a meeting here in 20 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to take Frank for a donor date. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Zach. The main of our existence. Volume 53. (laughs) <laughs> no doubt whoops that's all right zach lang lives there now yeah bought it, uh bought downtown condos at the peak of downtown condos that's a smart move long-term hey. investment. it's only a loss if you sell exactly right. can't predict the market buddy i can't stop thinking about how stressful it is every time you guys bring up how close things are getting like the tournament is next Thursday. This is by far in a father of two kids under 10, especially if they're, well, if they're playing hockey and they're in sports, this is by far the busiest time of the year right now. It is just, it's time that hockey camps are starting. We got hockey camps tonight. We've got baseball tonight. We've still got the tail end of golf. It's crazy right now. And like to think that, that tournament, last time I thought about that tournament, it was like a month away, and now it's next Thursday. Oh, my God. That's why I'm not saying anything. I'm just fucking thinking about all the things that are going on right now for people with kids. The tryouts for hockey coming up. That's why I'm at Pro Hockey Life right now. It's the busiest place I've ever seen right now. Everybody's getting their stuff ready for the next couple of weeks. Oh, man. You guys are lucky. Take advantage you of your freedom. Cap. Yeah. Noted. Noted. Okay. Don't yeah. have kids. Gotcha. <laughs> Deal. Nobody yeah. can relate to it. I, I just hope I just hope you're a little bit more easygoing come the golf tournament. I want easygoing challenges. No, I want I want to hear like when be- I pull up, because I imagine that I'm gonna have, have a sweet card as I usually do. And when I pull up to the real life group, I want to hear chirping. I want to hear it all. I want to hear full disc golf chalmers. That's what I want. Oh, you'll get you'll get Thursday chalmers. Right now, I'm in Monday chalmers. We just had another weekend where, of course, we overdid it a lot, starting on Thursday with our member guests, where we, I don't even know how to describe it. We um, we went full heavily, high school. We went full high school. Went full high school. What, bush so party? Much. Backpack full of beers? Oh, oh my God. Backpack full of beers. I believe that there was over 50 white call white claws consumed between four guys. I would mm. say ain't no laws um, when you're on the claws. Thanks goat for that. Yeah, And I didn't yeah. touch one ain't of no them. laws so. when you're on the claws. Is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Dang. Marketing. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then right into the weekend where you go and you, you have a little bit more fun. And so right now it's Monday Chalmers. It's like reality hits you like a big fucking anvil right in the face. And you think about all the responsibilities you have. By Thursday, I usually brush that off. I usually get back to, uh, you know what? You can only do so much. So let's have a good weekend here. <laughs> and we'll do it all over again. It's, a, it's an amazing cycle. Emotional roller coaster. It is, it is an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. yeah the Sunday 100%. scaries are real. 
I don't care anybody anybody <laughs> yesterday was a disaster. I remember that somebody explaining the Sunday scaries to me once, Chalmers, and I was like, oh, you only get those on Sunday? They're like, when do you get them? I'm like, the every day, all the times we call them in my line of work, which is undefined. The, the everyday scaries. Yeah, yeah the, all the times. I Man, I would that, say, yeah. though, like, since I started working at the nation, my Sunday scaries aren't nearly as bad as they used to be when I actually had to go sit in a gray cubicle all day. Those were Sunday scaries, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's, kind of remind like, me of one of the guy, one of the guys from Office Space. It was, it was off. It, that's what you know I what? worked in. You remind me of the guy that's driving <laughs> to work in Office Space in the beginning, rapping. I I should be rapping more. I agree. I drop a <laughs> that's nice rapping. That reminds me of me actually. Like when I watched Office Space, which is one of the few movies I've ever watched. That first scene, I was like, oh shit, that's me. Or that scene. Yeah, that could that be guy. both of you. Just straight up, it knows every word gangster rap and then shows up at the office and you're mr professional now <laughs> uh That's what, how about that new how about that new nos album anyone taking that in yeah of course it's great it's fantastic Fucking unbelievable Ooh, so I good smoke adding to the playlist right now man yeah. so just surprising your musical albums, taste though. here Amchuk. well done well done tyler's a big we, tyler and i we chat mm. hip-hop quite a bit actually that surprises yeah. me you're a riddle i am i have layers and the answer is your rem check mm-hmm yeah. Promise myself the next new music I listen to would be Donda, so I don't think I'm ever going to get to listen. To oh, Chalmers, you just triggered my trigger. I'm like a Manchurian <laughs> candidate. Donda. Do you want to talk about Donda for two minutes? Wasn't that supposed to come sure. out again this past this, Friday? Mm, How can I no one see theory. that this is all just an elaborate PR move by Kanye? That's all I think it is. Yes, you're M. Chuck. Yeah, yes, course. here's what of I think. I think it's not PR, though. I think it's genius. So... He, he's like, I'm going to put, for people who don't understand or care, but here's what it is. Uh, Donda is the new Kanye West album, and he's been holed up in the Mercedes-Benz arena in Atlanta, and he's had listening parties. So the, list, it, the album does exist. It's not like he's pretending to have an album that isn't done. And the people who went to the arena and listened said it's unreal, right? What I think is, I, and every time he performs it, and he did a whole week there, or something like that. He was there for a week and did it once or something. It broke the all-time record for Apple streaming. I think Donda is an album you have to go and hear him perform to hear it. I think that's so the he'll whole just point. never release it commercially, but you can hear it performed live. Wait, so you can stream? At, what do you, What do you mean you could stream the con? Like you could hear it live. Part? You can hear it live, but you but don't only get- if you were invited. No, you can subscribe on Apple Stream somehow or other. You can stream it via oh. Apple. And it, it was like 3.5 million people streamed the first concert. It was the all-time record. So imagine Kanye has put out an album that exists and that's awesome, but the only way to hear it is to go to his show live or listen to it on Apple streaming live. And it it's breaks like all the records. It's like a different flavor of what Wu-Tang did when they made that one album copy or whatever, that one copy yeah. of that one album. And so everybody else is like, I want to hear Donda. I want to hear Donda. And then imagine he kicks off a tour and you have to go to the concert to hear Donda. Like there are videos of it on YouTube that people held their phones out and shit, right? At the concert and recorded mm -hmm. it. It fully exists. But I was like, man, what if this is like, because at first I was like, oh, this is just like hype. But what if it's like a new type of album that you have to experience live in this day and age? I think that's super cool. I think that's smart. Yeah, he'd be missing out on a lot of money Walt though. Disney and shit. No, what if he's making more money this way? You're after. There's no way. Like he, Kanye could put out the album, make the money that way, and then still tour it and make gobs of money. No, Man, because he's got that Adidas money though. Well, not only that, but they were saying that Apple pays huge smoke for streaming content. So there was speculation he might be getting between ten and twenty million US from Apple to keep it exclusive to Apple streaming. Hmm. Hey, but what about what about it. like? If I wanted to right now, I could go put on, you know, college dropout and listen to it. Are we, are we yeah. saying that, like, with Donda, that just won't be able to happen? Yeah. Allegedly. And then Kanye can all, well, what if this is it? That was what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, eventually, I'm sure it'll come out. But what if it's a way to make people super interested in the album and do a crazy 50-show tour? This is how he's putting it together. Fuck. If he went on tour yeah. motoring from city to city performing the whole album, but you couldn't hear it anywhere, I think, but you stream it though, right? So it's not like it's yeah. fake. It's a real ass album. I don't know, man. Maybe Kanye is doing something wild because way more people care right now than if he just put together some 12 song album and dropped it. It would make Everybody a lot of sense. About it. I, he, 
he was the first one to put out like you know one or two songs like like albums with like five songs right mm-hmm. and realize that you could get you could get better numbers online from p- putting out an album with like just five to seven songs as opposed to one with like 20 songs because in that 20 songs there's three albums right like Mm-hmm. So he was he he has been kind of somebody who's seen trends and and tried to like you know do shit different way, right yeah, yeah change the way this shit was done so I mean the fact is, is there was a sense that he was doing something crazy but from everybody that's just like just put the fucking album out already like yeah. enough's enough you know like but it's there that's what's interesting is like it's out in a world where you can just punch up on your phone any song anytime anywhere it's interesting that something this much in demand like if it doesn't exist right if it's like detox and it's like oh dr yeah. you're gonna put out detox any minute now like no there isn't really been a detox there's been a shitload of songs but no coherent album kanye has it done kanye west yeah. is doing to the music industry what our friends at manscaped did to the personal grooming game yeah and that Changed is revolutionize it, yeah. it and yeah. become the talk of the town. <laughs> Donda the is the lawnmower 4.0 of yeah. music. Yeah. <laughs> Promo code. What is, what is it? That real life gets you 20% off in free shipping. It does not get you any sort of discount on the album Donda, but it does get you a sweet discount on the lawnmower 4.0 or any of the fantastic grooming products at manscaped.com. Enter promo about- code Cobra Command for an Easter egg to be sent to your email address that nope. you don't want to open. If you don't, uh, yeah, send those send those to Tyler at weathersnation.com as well. I was thinking about Kanye the other day. I wonder if he's going to be, and I think he will be, a guy like Prince where, you know, way down the line when he passes, there's just this insane vault of unreleased music because oh, the guy just sure. seems to be always cranking out stuff and this gets cut, that gets added, all that stuff. So I just imagine there's going to be a vault of Kanye stuff that comes out way later on like Prince. And mm-hmm. probably some like crazy story that he's been telling this whole time and putting in a vault that's going to come out. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. I, do you think he'll, I think he'll be a lot more normal now that he's not with the Kardashians. Mm. I think it is nothing but good for your mental health <laughs> yeah. to leave that uh, whirlpool of emotions. I think it might be really good for his mental health, but I'm not sure if I, I think Kanye is kind of Kanye. Like he's always going to be a little different. Yeah. But maybe not quite in the same eye of the same hurricane now. Like yeah, maybe, maybe. Isn't in the constant 24 hour news cycle all the time is one of the most exposed people on earth. Yeah. I, Cause where, where's he go? He like live, fucks off to like Montana or something. Yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. He lives like a oh, huge Wyoming. ranch and he's doing all sorts of wild shit. I think it, I think from the because like he is a guy who's been open about like his mental health issues and all that. I think him, you're right, maybe being away from the Kardashians is good for him to like only maybe be in the spotlight when he really wants to. Like it might be easier for him to kind of fuck off and relax and, and get out of it when he wants to. Yeah. Anyways, um, this is a hockey podcast. Maybe we weren't triggered. Could, right? Maybe maybe he gets full on to the lifestyle of Wyoming and starts showing prize heifers at the state fair. Oh, that'd be nice. And that's just kind of the wind down of Kanye. But yeah, honestly, he's still he's building, going giant pumpkins or something. He's yeah. building like a Yeezy campus out there. And he's trying like all sorts of crazy shit. And he tried to build structures. Like he was thinking about ways to build super low cost structures for homeless people. And he tried to build them on his huge piece of property in Calabasas. And they ordered them ripped down because they were like not allowed to be built. And he went all nuts about it so he has this project out in wyoming and there's like hundreds of people out there working with him and like yeezy when i first started seeing how like how big he thought it was going to be and i was like this guy's crazy it does 1.5 billion dollars in revenue now right yeah. and so if he's out there being like i'm going to change housing and i have this big ass campus with all these smart people i hired because i'm legitimately trillionaire kanye he's a pretty smart guy man you never know what he'll cook up yeah you're yeah you can't sounds deny like that he helped sounds like he helped uh change lumber prices by buying a bunch of lumber to build houses that had to get torn down. Oh, you think Kanye spiked lumber by building two geodesic domes <laughs> in Calabasas? I thought you said tons of structures. You, you made it sound like there was many, many, many structures. Well, I think now what he's doing as I read, and I didn't see any photos, is that he had like a plan for a prototype and now he's trying different prototypes. Oh, That's so now he's just building biodome? Yeah, yeah, he's got oh, Polly good Shorts. movie. Polly Shorts. Good movie, yeah. man. Is that Stephen Baldwin? Baldwin? Yeah, yeah, Stephen Baldwin. Fuck oh yeah. man, yeah. to think and that's Mahi Beaver's Mahi. father-in-law. Yeah, Beaver's father-in-law. Mahi Mahi. I love to that think movie. all the work okay. that the Baldwin brothers had to do, and Haley did better than all of them combined by getting Bieber with no prenup. Mm. 
They worked oh, in a no lot of movies, Thomas. Hey. No prenup. Nope. 26, no prenup. Hell yeah. No. Hell yeah. Hmm. That is interesting. I'm surprised that looping back there, your M check, you know that Nas made a trillion dollars on Bitcoin, eh? Really? If you look it up, I think he, they claimed at one point, uh, they, but they, he'd made a hundred million dollars in Bitcoin. Wow. The C- Nas, the secret Bitcoin billionaire. How much didn't he invest? Uh, Joining the company's 25 million Series B round in 2013, his firm invested between 100,000 and 500,000, his typical amount. Um, yeah, wow. He the, He's expected to reach over $100 billion in valuation. Billion or million? That's with a B. Oh, oh maybe that's for thing. the... Oh, he made early investments in Coinbase, which Coinbase. is expected to reach $100 billion. Right, right, right. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Did. Yeah, Speaking that makes of... Sense. Uh, I am changing gears, but we're sticking with Bitcoin a little bit. Um, I just watched on Netflix. They just loaded up this documentary called Shiny Flakes, the Teenage Drug Lord. If you if you guys are looking for something casual to watch, this kid was about 16, 17, 18, and slinging units from his childhood bedroom as an e-commerce play. And then he eventually, well, I'll- Slinging like, units of what? Coco? Ev- everything, man. Oh, everything. Oh. He looked at the Silk Road and he's like, I can do better. Uh-oh. And it just um, leads down this wild story of a teenager doing all of it from his childhood he, bedroom. He built and a rack net for you startup lovers. If you ever he, watch that show, he built something and the Bitcoin angle towards the end is fascinating. This is called shiny flakes, shiny flakes. Yep. The teenage drug I'm lord specifically. Oh, I'm watching that tonight. Dude, it's crazy it. that the Winklevoss twins took their hundred million from Zuckerberg and put it almost entirely into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Yeah. yeah. And to think like, I haven't seen a rent. Is there a Winklevoss net worth that you can let see me, bag milk? Let me look. I bet you they have way less stress than Zuckerberg and a fair amount of money. Uh, it is Three estimated. Billion. Uh, I've got newer numbers for you, bro. Oh, it is estimated $6 billion Bitcoin for, Each? for the Winkle or between them. Well, their wild worth, their their net their net worth will probably swing like a like a yo yo in the sense of Bitcoin Absolutely. valuation. But yeah, imagine but cashing it's still out high. Like, yeah, imagine cashing out of Facebook like early on, and then putting it all into crypto pre crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they did all right. They, they were, were basically the money crypto behind also. crypto coming to market was the Winkle bosses. Oh wow! They and were they that early involved. Launching their own called Gemini, their own flavor of crypto. Damn. Mm-hmm. Oh, and their Holy new shit. their new play here in 2021 is crypto credit cards, so that you can just buy stuff with a normal credit card, but it's using your Bitcoin or whatever. Huh. So, like, you go to Little Brick and you buy a scone for point zero 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 one of a Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Nice. And then you get paid in Bitcoin. And then you never have money anymore. How do you tax what doesn't have income? Mm-hmm. And that's when the government doesn't let us all have Bitcoin anymore. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a fun little game. Cat and mouse. It's well, honestly but at so, at some point, you have to turn into cash, I guess, unless... Well, maybe you don't. Unless you can pay with it, right? Yeah, unless you can pay via one of these credit cards and it just comes yeah. sucked right out of your Bitcoin wallet. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly start to accepting Bitcoin. We we had a vendor once want to pay us in Bitcoin, and I wish we did it. The unfortunate thing is we would have to convert it at the time and turn it into cash, so we probably wouldn't have got the crazy gains from holding on to it because we couldn't afford to. But Imagine how pissed off the Winklevosses must have been when Arnie Hammer turned out to be Arnie Hammer or Army <laughs> Hammer. Yeah. Hey, yeah, imagine like sequel. 10 years after he plays both of you in the movie. He's yeah. that much of a weirdo. Yeah, pariah. Man, I still, it, I've said this a bunch of times, but a social network too, but like right yeah, now man. would be way more interesting. With an update on the Winklevosses too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. somehow like, an update on Army Hammer. <laughs> yeah, slip that in there. I want to know what uh, Eduardo Saverin's doing as well. Yeah, he's Spider-Man. sitting on seven probably. Oh, for sure. And poor old Zuckerberg's yeah. got six cubic feet of suntan lotion on his face while he's trying to paddleboard. Poor that guy is looks like, a like, reinforced like layer. Dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning a lot here. I didn't know someone named Army Hammer was a real person. Don't still don't really know who he was, but I just see an article here from Complex in June of this year that just says 
a breakdown of Army Hammer's cannibalism and abuse controversy. Yeah, it ain't the best. <laughs> yeah, it ain't probably, the best. Uh, yeah, no, it wasn't a good look. He, he was, was the Lone Ranger. Like, yeah. yeah. He was... Oh, fuck you. Both Winklevosses. He was, in, Winkle he was both yep. Winklevosses in the, in the social the network. Bias, you were. He was in... Uh, what the fuck was that? Uh, the Man, Man from, from Uncle. Red or something? Uncle. Oh, Uncle. Yeah, he was in that. And then he t- turned out to be somebody so bizarre that Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Cosby together times a hundred may not cover it. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. Know. Okay. Well, stick with me or M check. We'll take you to the bottom of the trench. I don't know if I like where. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not going to like where it's going, Tyler. I no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Just uncomfortable. Stop now. stop now, bro. Yeah. I promise you that. Focus on your pickleball. Get away from that shit. Yeah, but Literally. you're gonna have to carry yeah. the team here with that sweat. Think how rich going. Nas is. Yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah. All right. Um, before we wrap up this pod, the whole podcast network now at the nation. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but it's brought to you by DoorDash. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Real life Who DD. Is it? It's Nas with a hundred million dollars. Boom. Yeah. You cannot order or pay with Bitcoin on DoorDash. Maybe one day. Yeah. Uh, Probably if, one day. If you want to save some money in the meantime, the promo code Real Life DD gets you 25% off and no delivery fee on your first order. So download the app, put in the promo code Real Life DD, new customer, you save some money. Dinner's on us. Dinner is on Chalmers tonight. Chalmers, what are we getting for dinner? Night? Yeah. Um, Slurpees. Noodle noodle. Oh. Noodle, noodle. noodle noodle and Slurpees. 57 Slurpees delivered to your door. <laughs> And then freeze them, take them off for later for nine hundred dollars because you ordered them from Seven Eleven. So if you I get them from Seven the... Eleven, like they, you have to, you have to put in what flavors you want, or will they fix so. them for you? Yeah, I, I've ordered Slurpees via a delivery app, and that's exactly what you do. Because I've got you I got ordered a Slurpee from a delivery app. Listen, I was feeling a little bit fragile and sensitive one morning, and I felt like a a, a Slurpee would start to right the ship. If you know what I'm saying. So that was like a yeah. fifteen dollars Slurpee. Well, yes, but I also tacked in a bunch of other shit to yeah, make it seem like man. I was actually, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Good, man. I uh, speaking, of noodle, speaking of Noodle Noodle, we had, uh, so we did that like troll low jingle kind of I was going to bring that up. So I, I had our call. So we have some, so obviously we have radio ads in the, the hit show, the Jason Greger show on TSN 1260, but also we've got some ads on now and up. We want to sprinkle around to talk to all the demographics. So I guess that ad is getting so much user feedback. It's insane. Like he's like, we have never seen anything like it. Really? On which station? Yeah. On both now and up. Like people well, here's, want, a, people here's a little taste for you, it. Wanye. So this was uh, what Jay retweeted. I retweeted this from uh, Oodle Noodle yesterday, I believe. Uh, it's just from one of the texts that came in. Heading out on the water tubing road trip to White Court this morning, and my boys really want to hear the Oodle Noodle radio commercial. It's always nice to start the day with a laugh from Crystal on the <laughs> West End. That's right. <laughs> Adam McGale, you genius. McGill. Yeah. You yeah. genius. Air support radio. Yeah, check him out for all your radio ad creation needs. But uh, yeah, it's funny that he's, he's going to get me some more feedback that they've been getting in from it because he's just like, he's like, he's because he asked me, he's like, are you seeing the feedback from this? I'm like, no. It's like, oh man, okay, I'm going to put something together. But here's one. Well, here's one right now I can just pull up really quick. And I was like, holy shit. It's I think it must be like that people don't necessarily remember that we used to reference that video. It's just such a cool, weird song that it mm-hmm. stands on its own merit. You don't have to get the joke to get the ad. Yeah. yeah. But well, that's why I was the- reluctant to put it on there. I only put yeah. it on TSN 1260 because I'm like, it's just like a nation inside the yeah. nation thing. I remember Very you saying right. that. I but, kind of agreed at the time. I was like, it uh, doesn't make any sense if we don't remember the joke. Yeah, but Brendan from now is like, man, he's like, I swear our audience, like, just trust me, our audience will like this. I'm like, okay. But since we're talking about feedback, dear listeners of the Real Life Podcast, I'm looking at the reviews and there are no new ones. Uh-oh. Nothing. Come I need your us. reviews. Yeah, rate our oh, summer fuck. content. I want to know what you're thinking. I will read it. You can tell me off. I'll read it. I don't care. Hit Chirp us up your in Chuck for being a very good pickleball player, despite never playing pickleball. Mm-hmm. self sure. sure. He's probably going to destroy us, but I can't wait. I'm still going to take this as a grudge and use this to fuel my fire. Mm-hmm. Tyler's got those long legs, man. He's going to, he's going to move around that court. Big wingspan. Look, doesn't even hold it in the zoom window. I got How tall are you, your M Chuck? Like six, two. Yeah, oh yeah. Neither does mine. Look, your M Chuck. 
<laughs> yeah, but that's because you're on the vertical energy. camera, Charles, and it's actually still pretty close. So, Charles, I'm six three. So just remember, <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got a wingspan too. Here I'm Chuck. Ch- Chalmers angrily spits out the seeds that were in his mouth when I chirp his height. Like, oh, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I I, I, oh yeah, no, I'm short. I am definitely short. Well, I got the muscle ham for my team. Chalmers is gonna be fucking just. He's gonna Chalmers, be. Chalmers, you're not there. short though. It's interesting because like your spirit is that of a fifth, like a 15 foot tall bear that will take your head off its shoulders. Like I, in my mind, I don't want to get too close because you might punch me out. So from afar, you don't seem short. All right. From um, far, anybody? Yeah, when you hear me. I'm gonna. We're gonna wrap up this week's uh, episode of the pod, episode three of seven, to be specific. It was a nice sandwich of nonsense at either end, and I snuck in the hockey talk in the middle. I think everyone did well. I think this was. Although I think the you, people will like this one. If you have Dave Tippett's number, we demand follow up questions on the mustache, please. Yeah, post interview. I have his email, not his phone number, so I could email him. Ooh. Mustache Dave request or the mustache Dave, ride at oilers.com. At yeah, it's just <laughs> Coach Dave. Yeah. at edmontonoilers.com tip daddy um all right well exactly. shout out to uh <laughs> just, just tip the tip. daddy boy oy, just oy. The tip at oilers.com <laughs> don't say this shit on youtube we'll get banned <laughs> uh shout out to uh, our title sponsor hga group the sponsor of the network doordash twig and berries and manscaped promo code nation 15 at twig and berries and real life at manscaped and uh, that'll do it for episode 307. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back on Thursday with another brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.